Okay, my good friends, Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, today talking about Einstein and E equals MC squared and the fact that light has no mass. That's what Einstein said. Albert Einstein, AE, said light has no mass. Well, I take exception to that because if E equals M, which is zero times, I don't care what you put in there, C squared doesn't mean anything because zero times anything is zero. Therefore, E equals zero times whatever still equals zero. So that means that light has no energy. That's by Einstein's own words. Now, so they come back and they throw in a bunch of Planck's constants and lambdas and the squiggly lines and this and that. And they say, all right, now this makes it all up. It's, it's a photon. Well, I don't care if you start with a zero nothing is nothing nothing will ever become something until it is something nothing is nothing i don't care how many lambdas and planck's constants and h's and whatever you add it doesn't make nothing it's nothing is nothing zero case closed light is zero it is nothing it has no no this is nonsense this is absolute total nonsense e has to light has to have a mass so now we come to reality this line up here unreality this line we started to reality light equals electrons thrown from the sun from their orbits because of intense extreme heat they have a mass and that is rs now light equals dark matter in transit. It's electrons coming from the sun. They didn't get here by nothing, which Einstein says they came from the sun, and they're nothing at all in space, absolutely nothing whatsoever. There's no matter, no particles, no nothing, and then all of a sudden they miraculously start to create heat and light and vibration and all those things on Earth. So let's take a look at special reality. Right. We just had special relativity, which is doesn't relate to reality, and this is special reality. Now, Mud Fossil University, of course, the Citadel of Truth, has special reality. Energy is push. Energy is push. That's all it is. It never will be anything other than push. One, if you push one thing, that's energy against the other. Case closed. It's impact. It's bounce. It's vibration. Something has to smash into something to create energy. That's my statement. That's my claim. What are the factors? The weight of the thing that's smashing, the speed of the thing that's smashing, the spin of the thing that's smashing, and the target density that it is smashing into. That's it. Now, for electrons, what are we discussing? We're discussing the electron, which is a particle coming from the sun, thrown off by extreme excitation, that equals the weight of that particle, which is the mass, 0. 0.00055 atomic mass units, time the speed of that light, which is not consistent, it can, it can change, times the frequency, which is the spin of that light, not the wave, it's a spin. It has nothing to do with wave, and it has nothing to do with duality, but when you look at a spin, which is the particle spinning, you look at it from the side, it's a wave. So now we have the frequency, how fast is it spinning in the duration of time. If it's spinning very slowly, spin, 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 it's not going to hurt anybody. But if it's spinning extremely fast for the same duration of time, it will impact very hard. And what is it impacting into? Is it hitting a marshmallow or is it hitting a stone wall? This is the math. Case closed. And this is special reality in action. The sun is extremely hot at the solar corona, but at the surface it's only 6,000 degrees. It's extremely hot in the solar corona because it is scrubbing through all the ether which is in space, which is the particles, which are the electrons, which are the negative particles rubbing against the negative particles of the sun because everything there is in the universe is coated with negative particles. Every atom is surrounded by electrons which are negative particles. The negative particles emitting from all luminous bodies flood through space. It's electron flood. We cascade through there being ripped by the arm of the Milky Way through space, rubbing, creating huge 
temperatures at the outside of the corona, but the 6,000 degrees down here quite different because it is scrubbing here, not down here. This is where the heat occurs. Now, the flood of electrons comes to Earth, and in between here and here, it is dark energy and dark matter. It does not collide because there is very few complete particles in space. The space station here, it lights up when it gets hit. Comets light up when they get hit, and, and meteors and all that business. Uh, that's just the way it is. The space is completely filled with ether. They knew this thousands of years ago, and now they're trying to come up with all these fifth forces of nature and the Higgs fields and all this business about oceans of of uh, space particle, uh, spaceness. <laughs> it's very, very. It, it, they're just trying to recreate what was already recreated or was created by Plato and all the rest of them back then. They knew all this stuff. So the emperor has no clothes. Einstein is not correct. Not correct whatsoever. One of the biggest questions in science. Explain how the coronal heating problem, please. Question of why the solar corona is so hot remains one of the most exciting astronomy puzzles for the last 60 years. There's no definite answer to that question yet. Until the emperor is seen as having no clothes, there will never be an answer. Okay, this is very basic. It's light, and it's light from a red laser. But it is light, and that's all it is, is light. Now we're going to follow the trail. This is light from the laser accelerated. That is a venturi. It crushes the particles, which are particles, into each other's regions. The tiny particle owns a large region around itself. As they come through the venturi, they are crushed and touching each other. Not allowed. When they come out, they are extremely excited and try to get away from each other as fast as they can. These are still negative particles. They will present as Higgs feels momentarily with polarized heads at the tip of all of these fibers. This is the reverse magnetic field created by the extreme uh, uh, crushing of all of these zones here. What that does is it excites all the particles within the region. And if you can see those little tiny particles there that are all glowy, these little tiny yellow ones, white ones, whatever they look like to you, they are the particles that are the ether that glows. And that's the same thing that glows when light hits anything. And the only thing that ever glows or shakes or vibrates or heats is when a particle violates its space. These are the polarized fields coming out of the accelerator towards us. These are the filaments that create these fields. As the tiny little particle, which is negative and it is a charged carrier, spins violently through space in a very restricted tiny little spot, it creates a field around it. The particle is, is unseen. This is a reverse spinning particle, has no magnetic field like the others, is extremely hot compared to the others, and is identical to what happened with Venus. Not only that, this, I believe, is antimatter. It came from light. It is the same particles as all the rest of the particles because they all came through the accelerator the same way. This one spins backwards. It has no magnetic field. However, it is the same particle as these spinning in reverse, so the polarity is reversed. That means that's antimatter. That's the definition. It's the exact definition. Same exact mass, one with a field, one with no field. That means polarity, backwards polarity. That is antimatter. And then this happened. That antimatter with no magnetic field crashed into a magnetic field, creating what appears to be a new propagation of a magnetic field and giving off a portion of a light particle. Not a massive particle. These particles came from light. These are supposed to be the smallest particles there are. I'm seeing something that is not the smallest particle, apparently. 
So let's leave it at that. I'm saying Einstein is wrong. Light is a particle, not a wave. It's not duality. It's not any of that stuff. It has energy. It has mass. And I did the math. I showed you the math. If you want to dispute it, dispute it. But I'm showing an atomic model that works. And this is why an atomic bomb shoots straight off the earth as it does. Okay, let's cut to the chase. This is the bottom line, right to gravity. All atoms are coded with negative electrons. All atoms are surrounded with negatives. We know this, they're the electrons, 100%. All light is negative electrons, 100%. That's my statement, and that's what I showed with the light experiments. Earth is a positive source. It's positive. It sucks all electrons. Will, all, the Earth will suck every electron you can give to it. That's why static jumps from you to the Earth. That's why they ground everything so the, the Earth will accept those electrons instead of killing you. All matter and light contain electrons. Light is electrons. Matter is coated with electrons. So there's your electron source. All complete matter, like Earth or asteroids, are magnetically attracted to everything else, to everything. They're attracted to each other because they both have negatives and they both have positives. And the positives re react in a much larger region than the negatives. So all positives are attracted, attract way out further. So they're pulling light in, they're pulling everything in. The electrons have a less of a... Of a, of a distance that they they control because they're very much smaller, they're 1800 times smaller at least or so than the larger positive particles. See, positives control a much larger region of space but a much weaker force. This is how gravity works. So everything is attracted to everything magnetically. Gravity is magnetism. Now with the Venturi, I just want to show you two last things. The Venturi and how I'm hoping to get, pla uh, well, it creates plasma. How we're hoping to cr turn that into fusion. Sustainable, passive, cold fusion can help the Earth solve all the problems on Earth right now. If we could do that. We could help to, you know, it's kind of late in the game, but it's absolutely what would be necessary if we're ever going to have any uh, impact. And then secondly, I want to show you why an atomic bomb shoots straight up off the Earth. Those two things will close this case very nicely. All right, this is the atomic bomb, and the reason it goes straight up in the air, this is Guide Wiki, by the way. The reason it goes straight up in the air is because the Earth is complete, sucks electrons. If you don't have electrons and you are a positive, get away. If you don't have any electrons, but everything that we know of has electrons, the only thing that doesn't have electrons is when you force matter together so intently that the electrons themselves say, get away from me, and they all go poof, and that's what you're going to watch. And I'm going to explain exactly what happens. This is an atomic bomb going off. All right. First thing is all the electrons come out. That's what's coming out, and they are coming out with a vengeance. They vaporize everything in the air that they're passing through. Boom, boom. Now, what's happening now is the core of the bomb has now turned positive and is, the mass of that is going straight up in the air now. And the reason it's going straight up in the air is because the Earth is positive and that core now has become positive. It's lost all of those electrons. All the electrons went out and vaporized all the people and this, everything that was out there. And they went out with a vengeance. Plus, there was some protonic particles, some heavy particles inside. There are no neutrons in the new atomic model that that covers all this. There's no neutrons. It's called electronic flood. Now, this is now a positive chunk of, of matter. It's a chunk of mass. It is positive. And it is rising straight up off the Earth because the Earth is also positive. It's being shot up like a rocket. As it goes, it tries to re combine itself into electrons so everything gets pulled back in this mushroom crowd. It glows like crazy because it's heating up as it recombines itself to become back to, to matter. And it will continue to pull straight up. It doesn't go out in a big fluffy ball like a, a regular bomb. That's because it is now a positive mass. It's starting to recapture itself, but sooner or later it will trail off up in the air and then all that stuff will dribble back down. 
Now, if there's anybody out there that can help, I do need help. We are accelerating light. That is accelerated light. I don't care what you say. That's what it is. It's coming through this Venturi, and it's turned into plasma, and that has been acknowledged by experts. They, they, I've talked to people um, that have agreed with this, no question whatsoever, and they say it's fabulous, and this is kind of a magical device. It is crushing everything together mechanically. There's no big magnetic bottles or any of that business. Now, if we could do this with heavy protons instead of electrons, we'd get the same plasma. I don't see how you could possibly see it wouldn't have the same plasma. It's going to still have plasma because they're 1,800 times bigger or so. They're much bigger than electrons. They've still got to fit through a restricted space and crash into each other. They still own regions. So we're going to come out of here with plasma. And if we could contain it, shoot it back into some kind of a of a containment area where it had a re resonance chamber or something inside there where you could create the helium from the hydrogen protons, you might be able to get fusion. So I need somebody to really look at this. See, we're never going to get anywhere if you try to keep playing around with this black, spooky, fermion, inter this and that crazy different, uh, you know, they had so many squiggles. They go, oh, it's going to take six days to, six, to explain this to you. No, it takes six minutes. After that, it's all nonsense. Now, we got to get back to reality, and this is what reality is. I'd like to have somebody look into this. This is very important. It's not, it's not silly whatsoever. All right, thank you.